Now, before I get into this rack store mini haul video, I want to show off how loaded my local Marshalls was. Just look, absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, but look at this niche fragrance. Creed Aventus Cologne. To my surprise, I ran into this. Not one, but two of them jokers. It was sitting beautifully waiting for me to gaze upon it. Did I buy one? No, I didn't. Because that joker came up to $300 and some change. Now, I know that it's still a lot of money, but to the best of my knowledge, I'm pretty sure that is a nice price compared to getting it from like Saks or Neiman Marcus or something like that. But yes, I was very, very amazed and pleased on the roster, the lineup that they had at my local Marshalls. Man, it makes me proud to be a collector seeing stuff like that. I have a lot, I have a lot, and I mean a lot of work to do this year. Because these cheapies are getting better and better, and these fines is getting better and better. Bigger and bigger, greater and greater. <sighs> wow. But let's just jump into the rest of the video. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Trayvon here with Scent Talk TV. And today I went on a little bit of a mini rack store haul. Uh, I haven't done one of these in a minute, in a long time, because the last time I went to my rack stores, it was kind of dry, you know, because it was right after the holiday season. But say less, I have found some goodies, some good cheapies. But without further ado, let's just jump into it. All right, so moving right along to the first fragrance that I bought at my local Marshalls. Now, this one I haven't seen before, but I have heard of it before. And one of you lovely subscribers of mine told me to pick this up if I see it. So when I saw it, I immediately recognized the name and the bottle actually intrigued me to pick it up as well. So from the house of, I'm guessing, Privé, judging by the name of the cap, this is Illusion Intense. Now, this bottle strongly resembles like a Dior own, Dior own Intense bottle. So I'm assuming that this is a clear dupe of that fragrance. So let's find out. This fragrance ran me $15 and some change. Pressurized Atomizer, gotta love it. Yep, yep, yep. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Definitely Dior Homme Intense, just through and through. That iris, that lipsticky, makeup-y type of an iris, that smooth and creamy and warm and sweet and attractive and mass appealing. Definitely a dupe, a clear dupe of this. If you do not have a bottle of Dior Homme Intense and you run across this one at your local rack stores, and you're interested in this particular DNA of Dior Homme Intense, this will get the job done through and through. I know this is first impressions. You know, the dry down could change. You know, that familiarity to that fragrance could change and, and dry down into something else. But so far, this is a strong resemblance to that fragrance, judging by the juice, the bottle itself, and the smell. And it smells lovely. However, you do still maintain the uh, that Dior Homme intense familiarity, you know, from the top into the mid as it's drying down on my skin. But for some reason, I'm getting some sort of a citrus note, like an undertone of a citrus type of a, you know, accord that is mesh meshed in well with the uh, mid into the dry down, the full dry down, and it smells good. It's just that it kind of throws the fragrance off into a different direction of you know, the original Dior, Dior Homme Intense. So it's not a big difference. It's not a big turn off or it doesn't turn it into a complete uh, direction that far at all. You know, it's just that you have that citrusy type of an undertone, at least on my skin that I get from it. But nonetheless, this is a great attempt of a dupe of that fragrance. As it dries down completely, gave it time to dry down completely, 
get this makeup y lipsticky iris that's powdery and sweet. You know, the powderiness kind of creeps in even more as it drives down on your skin. Kind of a, like a powdery masculine floral vibe. A little bit of a citrusy undertone and it smells phenomenal. You know, it is re it's like remotely close, almost close, like 99.99% close. 99.9% .9 close to the original Dior Own Intense. Man, this is nice. This is really, really good. Alrighty, so from the same house of Privé, we have Privé Ethos Man EDT. Same style bottle. I don't have any idea what this is cloning or duping, but we shall see momentarily. So let's go. This fragrance here also ran me $15 and some change. Not a pressurized atomizer, but it is what it is. Hmm. Okay. Now this one, it doesn't really smell. Well, yes, it does. I take that back. It does smell familiar to something that I have, probably cheapy wise. But this one right here opens up, you know, soft, sweet, bright, and citrusy. You know, kind of a, not too dark, but kind of a, like a masculine dark scent, you know, that's more suited to wear for like, you know, daytime wear. You know, it's like a, you know, generic type of a boring, sweet, bright, you know, mass appealing scent. Well, I wouldn't go as far as mass appealing, but initially that's why I got like, it was mass appealing, but instantly like that, it like dried down into something that was, that was kind of boring and generic. As it's drying down though, you do get a little bit more of a green citrusy type of a woods as it's drying down, you know, making it a little bit more of a, like a summery type of a vibe. You know, whatever sweetness that I got that was in the opening, like the fresh sweetness is kind of dying down quite fast. And what's coming to the forefront is some type of like a green accord that's citrusy and woodsy at the same time. And that's pretty much what I get out of this so far. You know, I'm gonna let it dry down completely so I can give you a full, you know, aspect of the dry down. So just give me a minute. Okay, I let it dry down. So not too much of a big difference as I let it dry down, you know, completely. You know, it's just a citrusy, green, woodsy scent, and that's it. You know, I do have this particular same DNA somewhere in my collection, uh, somewhere, you know, cheapy wise or, you know, I don't think that this is cloning anything, you know, or duping anything, but it does like, you know, cheapy wise, you know, it has that, you know, that normal, you know, traditional syntheticness that you might smell in some cheapies. This one ha carries that, you know, at least from the, actually throughout the longevity of this fragrance. But I will say the syntheticness of this is not too noticeable. You know, you just, it's just, to me, it's kind of boring. Only thing that changed as it completely dried down is that it, you get like, you know, a soft, like, you know, woodsy spice to it as well with that green citrus is, and that's it. So as far as like the projection and stuff like that and the performance thus far, you know, it's a little bit uh, below average. You know, as I'm holding my hand like this, I cannot pick it up, but I can definitely pick this up on my other on my other hand. It's like just a powerhouse. So far, this is great. You know, I'm getting like a nice whiff of it, you know, as I'm like, you know, moving my arms and doing these gestures. This one right here. Don't pass it up. But this one, I say give it a hard pass. But it's okay. Let me be generous. It's okay. It's not a mess. It's okay. That's it. Next. Okay, up next we have, ooh, 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 I've been waiting for this one. Woo, I've been waiting for this one. From the house of Milestone. If I had like a ring announcer or something like that to say Milestone, as I present this fragrance, I would because it deserves it because this is the champion cheapy house. Nothing can top Milestone. Do not 
argue with me, Milestone is killing the game with the bottles, the pressurized atomizers, the scent and longevity itself. Man, and they've been hitting, you know, undefeated. So let's see, they will, let's see if they're still undefeated. I'm stumbling over my words, but let's see if they still undefeated with this one. I'm talking too much. So from the House of Milestone Perfumes, this is Royal Collection, X-Men. Yes, indeed. Look at the gorgeous looking bottle. Look at that cap. Reminds me of a like a John Paul Gaultier like scandal cap. But yeah, this bottle is very, very hefty and heavy and gorgeous. So let's go. This fragrance ran me 20 bucks and some change. Hmm, that's odd. It's not a pressurized atomizer, but it's still a good one. <sighs> niche in a bottle niche quality in a bottle niche quality in a nice quality $20 and some change bottle you get with this with this am I excited yes I am milestone undefeated once again Never came across a milestone fragrance that I did not like so far ever since I've been reviewing this house since 2022. Yeah, they have done it again. It's warm, it's masculine, has like some type of a woodsy oodiness to it, has like this cumin cinnamon type of a soft sparkle, sparkle to it in the opening, but that sparkleness dries down and it dissipates just a little bit some like woodsy and warm and just nutty at the same time on my skin very very masculine grown man scent this is if you are a person that wants something that's a little bit more casual as a grown man scent it's right here Woo! and it performs awesome it pushes out awesomely. Yo, quality, quality. I don't know what to say. I'm speechless. The bottle is quality. The smell is quality. I'm gonna wait for it to dry down and give you a full aspect of it because my goodness, man. All right, now. This one is a dark fall and wintertime oriented fragrance. It's dark, woozy, like bourbon masculine type of a scent that has a soft, like heavy bourbon-like sweetness that's kind of leathery and oody and a little bit like musky and mossy at the same time. Now, would I say this is blind by worthy? No. I wouldn't say that because it does have a tiny, tiny bit of complexity when it comes to that oody leatheriness that I get out of here. You know, first impression, I do not know what the specific notes that is, that is inside of this fragrance. I don't know. Also, I looked online and this is a Clive Christian dupe of a fragrance. You know, judging by the cap and the bottle and the lettering and all that stuff, you know, this is a clear dupe of that fragrance. And I haven't smelled that fragrance before, and I probably never will. But I do have the dupe in my hands. So if that fragrance, the original, smells just as good as this, I hit a lick. I done got lucky with this. I'm also thinking I'm picking up some type of patchouli, like some dark green patchouli with that woodsiness and that leathery accord. You know, that soft, like a very, very bourbon soft sweetness to it that's masculine. <sighs> yeah, this is a keeper. This is a keeper. It's not going anywhere. It's staying right here. It's here to stay, here to stay. And I must say, good job, Milestone, once again. Okay, last but not least for the ladies, we have Oksana Patchouli by Amarin Parfums. Do like this bottle. Solid, like Jolly Rancher grape bottle. I do dig it. So let's jump into it. 
This fragrance ran me $17 and some change. Pressurized atomizers. Yes, Lord. Ooh. You do not have to be screaming at me like that because, wow, this is loud. Oh, man. That's love. That's love. I can easily place this under, like, the unisex category because it does have a masculine, has a lot of masculinity with that, uh, in a base at least, well, not the base, you know, from that patchouli. I really do get a nice, good, dark, sweet, smooth green patchouli with this one. I'm also getting a little bit more of a candy-like sweet powderiness as well. Now the powderiness is not like, you know, too like invasive or too loud and something like, uh, or something like that. It's kind of like subtle and smooth and quiet. You know, it's like fruity and somewhat creamy, dark and masculine and green as it drives down on my skin. Not bad. Kind of like a warm, balsamic type of a green, like fruity. The fruitiness that's inside of here is very, very dense, heavy and solid. You know, it is right there. As soon as you put your nose into it, you just get that very, very dense, solid fruitiness. At least first impression, that's what I'm getting. You know, green, masculine patchouli. The patchouli is definitely the star player in this fragrance. You know, it's definitely well-rounded, smooth, no synthetic twinge or touch or vibes or in the slightest at all. This is a very, very natural, authentic smelling fragrance for the price of $17 and some change. If you love patchouli and you love masculine or unisex type of fragrances, this one is the one for you. Now, thus far, the performance is choking me out. You know, the projection is definitely suffocating my nostrils and burning every nose hair that's in it. And it is, a uh, definite, definite plus in my book in terms of projection and the performance, I will believe is no slouch either. Wow. I'm, wow. So when it finally dries down, completely dries down, you get this warm, like candy-like sweet patchouli that's dark green and mysterious and lovely. Best suited for women and is also suited for men because that dry down is when the masculine touch finally drives his way in and makes itself known with that feminine vibe next to it. So I will be keeping this and I will be keeping this to review, do a full review on it. And I will be wearing this. This is not going anywhere either. Man, these are some great pickups. However, <sighs> Give me a moment as I go back to Ethos Man. You know, it also has it like in a very, very complete dry down. For some odd reason, it turned into like a musky, aromatic, dry, dusty scent with a little hint of an accord of a green citrus behind it and synthetic. So, like I said, it's generic and it's kind of boring. And it's not that much of a big deal to go out and rush and grab and see for yourself. At least in my opinion, it's okay. It's okay. Going back to this though, man, if you can, if you, whew, yo, if you are interested in DR Ohm Intense and you do not want to pay the price for the original, this would get the job done, fam. Just by one or two sprays on my arm, this one does the job done in terms of the original Dior Homme Intense, in terms of performance and smell. This is a definite go-getter fragrance. Go get it, go get it. So, with this one, I probably haven't sprayed myself enough because the Fragrance is kind of sitting close to my skin already, and it's kind of disappointing. But 
I will not lose hope and I will not throw shade on Milestone like that ever again until I finally come up with a full review of this and then I will give my verdict then. But I'm keeping my high hopes for Milestone because Milestone has been killing it, ladies and gentlemen. So we wanna keep the belt around the waist of Milestone. Yes, we do. So if you want a full review of this, just let me know in the comment section below and I'll give you a full review of this one with my thoughts, companions, and concerns. So that's all that I have for Scent Talk TV, ladies and gentlemen. And as always, you know what to do. You gotta like, comment, share, and subscribe and make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. And I will see you guys in the next video. Be safe out there and be blessed and have a good one. I'm out of here. Peace.